Hello everybody, it's Andrew here and we're going to use Ben Hogan's Five Lessons of Modern Principles of Golf, uh, his own words, so we can stop trying to be perfect and so we can play great golf like Hogan did because he also stopped being perfect or trying to be perfect. So watch the next video and then I'll get back to you. Take care. See you in a second. It's, it's right out of the modern fundamentals of golf, which I thought would appeal to all of you. Um, but many, many times I've given this and read it to a lot of the tour players I've worked with. And I thought it'd be worth taking a moment to read. It says, most golfers acquire confidence over a period of time. Hogan had great confidence and a great swing. He played with a coolness and a confidence that he was even a marvel to the Scots who coined the phrase that we ice one. Of the two, the swing and the confidence, he attained the swing first. Even after he had a swing that would win tournaments, he still had periods of uncertainty. He describes how it happened. I never felt genuinely confident about my game until 1946. Up to that year, well, I knew once I was on the course and playing well, that I had the stuff that day to make a good showing. Before a round, this everybody can identify with. Before a round, I had no idea whether I'd shoot 69 or 79. I felt my game might go sour on any given morning. I had no assurance if I was a little off my best form, I could still produce a respectable round. My friends on the tour used to tell me that it was silly to worry that I had a group swing. And the you know, first time I saw that, I said, how many people in the world can identify with that? But my self-doubting never stopped. Regardless of how well I was going, I was still concerned about the next day and the next. In 1946, my attitude suddenly changed. I honestly began to feel that I could count on playing fairly well each time I went out, that there was no practical reason for me to feel that I might suddenly lose it all. I guess that what lay behind my new confidence was this. I had stopped trying to do a great many difficult things perfectly because it had become clear in my mind that this ambitious over-thoroughness, my perfectionism, was neither possible nor advisable or even necessary. All you needed to grow were the fundamental movements, and there weren't so many of them. I don't know what came first, the chicken and the egg, but at about the same time I began to feel that I had the stuff to play credible golf even when I was not at my best, and my shot making started to take on a new and more stable consistency. Now, You'd be amazed how many tour players, when I read that to them, have said to me, that can't be in that book. I've read that book over 300 times. I've never seen that. And I look at them and I say, well, because when you were reading that book, you were looking for a way to perfect the golf swing. You weren't looking to hear Ben Hogan say, you got to get out of your way and let it go and make it simple. And it's been very useful for a lot of guys, which is why I share it with you. Because this is a game where you have to learn some skill, and you sure have to have a nice motion and a nice movement, but you also have to go out on the golf course and play. Hello again, Andrew here. So you've watched the video and you saw the page 90 uh, from the uh, Five Lessons book, the famous Five Lessons book, and that is uh, obviously Rotella tells the story great how so many people say I have never read that I have never read it well it's in the book it's about five minutes from the end page 90 so check it out for yourself and here's the thing is that I think the modern principles of golf five lessons has made people so perfection orientated in their swings that unless they feel it's perfect you don't play well and to be quite honest that's not going to happen very often I, I, I used to play that way and to be quite honest I would play very well and then I'd hit one bad shot and all of a sudden my game had gone because I wasn't perfect anymore it was rubbish and I needed to get back to the range and work on it again and it was like the whole round would just go and it's like that's you can't play golf like that and Hogan really in that book he states that that basically he realized that he was trying to reach perfection 
and it was stopping him from doing the most important thing in golf which is play golf well see the card only wants a number it doesn't want a swing feeling how far you hit it uh, how you felt or did my swing look pretty and did it look perfect no your swing can be perfect but if you hit it out of bounds <laughs> it's three off the tee so it's 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 not a game of perfect i think that's dr bob roteller again you know because the fact is is that we are going to hit bad shots i think it was hogan that said again that he only hit about six perfect shots during a round yet we would look at his game and go wow every shot was perfect but as hogan said to somebody once when they said perfect shot bend he went how do you know you didn't hit the ball and that's the thing you know we are not going to be perfect but on a par four the worst i want is a par four that's the most important thing because we can you know the 19th hole is full of stories stories of longest ever drives you know you should have seen that chip you should have seen this you should have seen that but at the end of the day what everybody always says is so what did you score because that is the bottom line and hogan got that that he understood that the bottom line was the score the score decides if you win or lose so i saw a guy once uh you know and, and, and this idea that uh you know we we need to be perfect as i said it harmed my game and, and i remember watching a guy who was about to tee off i was off an 18 handicap years and years and years ago and he took a practice swing and it made it was so good it made me stop and say to my mate oh, I want to watch this guy tee off. He, he looks really good. And my mate smiled and laughed a little bit. And I wondered why he was laughing. And he was off single figures. And he teed off with a swing which was completely the opposite of his practice swing. Because he let fear and everything get in the way. So the fact of the matter is, and, you know, and I learned this the hard way in my first pro tournament, I played terrible, absolutely terrible. Did I forget how to swing a golf club? No. But I'd forgotten how to score because I hadn't played in a pro tournament for 10 years. So the fact of the matter is, is yes, you know, Ben Hogan was saying 70% of the game, at least in his game, was mental. And it's true. But if you're always trying to be perfect, you're really going to be really in trouble. So, you know, when I line, he talks about the, getting the fundamentals right on that page that I put up and what Dr. Bob talked about. And, the, and the, you know, it's grip, stance, posture, finding your proper grip, stance and posture. I've done videos on them because ultimately you don't build a house from a bad foundation. So Hogan made sure that his foundations were correct. And then it's a swinging motion. Manuel de la Torre. Uh, and ultimately, on any given minute of any given hour, we will be thinking differently. And there are moments you hit a golf ball where you totally get out the way of yourself. And you just think, wow, that was incredible. That was effortless. Then you start searching <laughs> for what you did. And because you can't find it, you get frustrated, when reality is you had it. And it's, it's, it, all it is, is having a good, being in balance, having a good grip, stance, posture, and swinging the golf club. And once you swing it, the ball's gone. You can't, you know, you can move your body as much as you want. You're not gonna move that ball because, you know, you will miss a green you will miss a fairway get over it i had to and you know ultimately if you don't get over it if you keep on seek seeking this secret for a perfect golf swing you will have a miserable golf life it just it will be miserable i've been there i know it so you know when i 
I have seen so many people with poor grip, stance and posture, and then they expect to play well. Well, Hogan took that out of the equation. He also took out the equation. The fact is that all his clubs were bent four degrees open because he sure as heck wasn't going to hook that ball. So you try opening your club face by four degrees, you will cut down the amount of hooks. Incredibly so. But his were actually manufactured four degrees open from his driver to his sandwich. So technology he used and also he used the fact that he wasn't going to be perfect. There's only the Iron Byron golf machine that's perfect. And that's a mechanical uh, thing with no brain. Once you put a brain in there, we're, we're thinking about constantly different stuff. So, got to let it go. So, they asked Luke Donald when he was world number one and he'd won the money list in Europe and he was, he'd won the money list in America, what the heck do you practice now that you're, you're so perfect? He said, he said, grip, stance, posture, balance. See, it, it, that's what we go back down to. So, you know, if I'm, if I'm not, if I'm out of balance, my brain is always going to try and get me back into balance. So, you know, there I am. I'm balanced. I've got my good grip, good stance. And from there, with relaxed arms, I'm just hinging and swinging through. That was a nice balanced swing. And I would do that down the range. So it's just balanced. That was effortless. <laughs> and it was pretty darn good. And I wasn't thinking about a million things. And I, I know that if I was aiming at a target, that would be probably five foot either side of that target, which I can live with. Because I've only ever hold a full iron shot once, no, twice in my life. So I know it's not going to happen very often. That's in 40 years. So this video is about you not trying to find a secret. But if I was just doing this one thing, Hogan did one thing. No, he didn't. He did lots of things very well. He had a good grip. He had good stance, good posture, good balance. And he swung the golf club around that using ground forces. And, and to be quite honest, once you do that, you can play some really good golf. Now, try this. You just saw me hit. I haven't hit a golf ball today. That's the first shot I've hit. And it was dead out the centre because I know it, because this is forged. Uh, and I think you'll find if you give up on perfect, you can start playing some really good golf. Because, you know, the last round of golf I played at Hags Castle in Scotland uh, during winter, you know, I hadn't played for a year and a half. And I really didn't know if I was going to shoot 90 or, or what. I ended up shooting a 74. And I really enjoyed it. Uh, but at no point did I think I was perfect. Because I know I'm not. At no point did I think, oh, this is the longest game of it. No, it, it was good golf with few errors. Good stance, good posture, good grip. And... I just hit it with a nice butter fade all the way round. So I know what I'm doing. I know I'm not going to play army golf left, right, left, right. So trying to be perfect in your practice is not going to help you. But trying to find your proper grip, your proper balance, stance, posture, all those things they will definitely help but you don't even have to hit a golf ball to do those because you know i know that if i stand here like this i'm out I, I, i'm that's completely wrong i can't i can't make the same swing as i just did so 
giving up on perfect is going to help you a lot because you're going to accept that you're not a machine and as such you cannot do the same shot probably even twice but you can play par golf I believe most people that take up this game could be off less than 10 handicap if they gave up on trying to be perfect and trying to control the club when all the club wants to do is swing and this was what Hogan was on about giving up on perfect enabled him to score well because he realized everybody kept on telling him he'd got a good swing the only person that didn't believe it was Hogan and then when he started believing that actually I don't need a perfect swing then he started really winning some stuff so I hope this helps this uh, you know I think there is too much made of magic moves uh, or a secret in in Hogan's swing but I think this is really a nugget and it's interesting how most people miss it even when they've read the book five times so try this give up on perfect and get better from Andrew Lynch trying to help you keep it simple take care till next time if you want online lessons please contact me via my website bye